Okay, so in this video, we want to look at a very nice application of Maclaurin series in helping us evaluating certain special limits. So here's the limit that we will consider in this video. So we are letting x approach 0, and we will look at e to the 3x minus 1 minus 3x over x squared. As always, when we consider a limit, we look at the case that we're dealing with. As x goes to 0, 3x goes to 0. But e to the 0 is 1, so we have 1 minus 1, therefore 0, over, well, as x goes to 0, x squared also shrinks to 0. And so we have a 0 over 0 case. This is a non-trivial indeterminate case, but because it is a 0 over 0 case, we can, of course, attack the limit using L'Hopital's rule. And if you recall, L'Hopital's rule says that we can replace both in the event of a 0 over 0 case, the numerator and the denominator, by their respective derivatives. So if we differentiate our numerator, we will obtain by the chain rule e to the 3x times 3, the derivative of 1 is 0, minus the derivative of 3x, which is 3, so therefore negative 3, over the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Looking at our case again, as x goes to 0, 2x goes to 0. As x goes to 0, 3x goes to 0. e to the 0 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, minus 3 is 0. So once again, we have an indeterminate case of the form 0 over 0. So we still don't know what this limit is, but we can again apply L'Hopital's rule. So we differentiate the numerator, 3 being a constant multiple will just stay there. By the chain rule, the derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x times 3 times the initial 3 minus the derivative of 3, which is 0, over the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And now we have a trivial limit. As x goes to 0, 3x goes to 0, e to the 0 is 1, times 3 times 3 is 9, over 2, and so the answer is 9 over 2. So as x is getting closer and closer to 0, this function is getting closer and closer to 9 over 2. Now this is, of course, an old solution. Let's try and attack this problem in a completely different matter, not using L'Hopital's rule, but using instead the Maclaurin series of e to the x. If you recall, this is the first solution. Now here's our second solution. If you recall, e to the x is equal to, for all values of x, to its Maclaurin series, which is surprisingly simple simply summing x to the n over n factorial as n ranges from 0 to infinity. Let's expand the first few terms of the series, which will give us 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so forth. The great thing is, again, that this equality is valid for all values of x. So we can replace x by anything, and the equality will always remain valid. Now we were considering here not e to the x, but e to the 3x. Well, as we have the Maclaurin series for e to the x, we can obtain quite easily the Maclaurin series for e to the 3x, replacing x in the equality by 3x. So e to the 3x, making the substitution, will give us and I'll look at the expanded form. So 1 plus 3x plus, well, 3x all squared is 9x squared over 2 factorial plus 3x all cubed, well, 3 cubed is 27 times x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. And this is also valid for all values of x. What's interesting in the limit, of course, is we are letting x approach 0. 
So we're saying that x is taking on smaller and smaller and smaller values. So if you think about this, look at the terms of the series. You have a constant term, a multiple of x, of x squared, of x cubed, and so forth, all higher powers, x to the 4, x to the 5, and so forth. But when x is very small, larger and larger powers of x are even smaller. Right? As you take an even larger power of a very small quantity, it becomes even smaller. And why is this essential? Well, let's look now at the numerator. e to the 3x minus 1 minus 3x. Well, let's subtract both of these terms on both sides, and we will have that e to the 3x minus 1 minus 3x will be equal to the leftover terms. So 9 over 2 factorial, x squared, plus 27x cubed, over 3 factorial, and so forth. So this equality is valid for all values of x, but here's the key observation. We are letting x approach 0. So sure, x squared is small, but compared to x squared, x cubed is even smaller. The next term will be a multiple of x to the 4, which is even smaller than x cubed, as x is very close to 0. So the dominant term on the right is the multiple of x squared. As all other terms are even larger powers of x, and x is very close to 0, all of the other terms of the series will be extremely small. And for that reason, they can essentially be discarded. And so what we have now is that this infinite series will be approximately the dominant term, the first term, 9 over 2 factorial x squared. This is of course only true for extremely small values of x. And so now we can go back to the original limit. We were looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the 3x minus 1 minus 3x over x squared. Right? This is the limit that we first considered. And now what we'll do is we will replace in the expression e to the 3x minus 1 minus 3x, the numerator of the expression, by this approximation coming from the Maclaurin series of e to the x. So what we'll get will be this term. And again, we can disregard the other terms as they are insignificant since x is very small. So the dominant term of the series was the multiple of x squared. So we have 9 over 2 factorial x squared, but 2 factorial is 2, so we have 9 over 2 x squared all over x squared. Well, the squares cancel, and we're left, of course, with simply 9 over 2. As expected, since we obtained 9 over 2 using L'Hopital's rule in the first case. And so you see, you can attack limits in a very different way if you have some knowledge of Maclaurin series. Now you might wonder, well, why bother with such an approach when, at least in this case, L'Hopital's rule gave us a fairly simple and elegant solution. Well, there will be cases, such as the next video, where you have a limit yielding a 0 over 0 case, and applying L'Hopital's rule will return worse and worse limits that will be more and more difficult to evaluate. So this approach will be horrible, whereas the approach using Maclaurin series will be surprisingly elegant. And this is why this is good to know, because not every limit, even though it may yield a 0 over 0 case, can be tackled using L'Hopital's rule. Sometimes L'Hopital's rule will fail miserably, and Maclaurin series will provide a very elegant solution to the limit problem. And this will be the topic of our next video, where we will look over such an example.